Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabudiwa Sos Ugobela Wemet. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we are given here. Ra. Okay, so we are on momentum and impulse. Then we are given question three here. It says two metal balls, A and B, are rolling along in a horizontal straight line towards each other in a closed system. Ball A with a mass of 0.75 kg is rolling at a speed of 4 meters per second. Then ball B with a mass of 1.25 kg collides head on with ball A at a speed of 3 meters per second. Then they say after the collision, ball A rolls in the direction opposite in the direction opposite to its initial direction at a speed of 2.5 meters per second. So I need you to note that if, if ball A is now rolling in the opposite direction to its uh, initial direction, that means uh, this velocity here or this speed here must now be indicated as a negative. So when it was still rolling to that direction, to the right or to the eastern direction, that was positive, but then after uh, colliding with B, it rebounds and then goes to the opposite direction. So the 2.5 is now negative, right? So it is very important to note. Now to calculate the change in momentum experienced by ball A due to the collision, let's collect the data. We have the mass for ball A is 0 0.75 kg, and then we have the initial velocity is a uh, four meters per second and then the final velocity note it's negative 2.5 meters per second since it's going to the opposite direction and then uh, that's basically all that we are given so we are trying to calculate change in p so we do know the formula to calculate uh, the change in momentum let's uh, quickly do that so to calculate the change in P, we're just going to go change in P is equals to M, VF minus VI, and then our mass is 0 0.75. Our V finally, that's negative 2.5. And then our V initially, that's 4. So if you just quickly punch that into your calculator, you have a negative 4.875 kg meters per second. So because it's negative, we need to conclude on that and say change in P is 4.875 kg meters per second to which direction? West. So remember, we have our cardinal points. Then this is not east, south, west never ever smoke weed if you want to remember that so but then most of the time you are given if you are not given then you need to know then uh let's proceed to the next question three point two says use a uh, the change in momentum of ball b to calculate the velocity of ball b after the collusion so we are required to use the change in momentum uh, of ball B. But then how are we going to find out uh, about the change in momentum for ball B? Note this. If you are given uh, uh, this question here, you need to understand one thing. The change in momentum for ball A is the same magnitude as the change in momentum for ball B. The only difference is in the direction. The change in momentum for ball A will be in the western direction because ball A is experiencing a force from, from ball B here in the western direction. But ball B is experiencing a force from ball A in the eastern direction. So the, the magnitude of the change in momentum will be equal, just it will be different in terms of the sign. This one will be negative. This one is positive because this is going to the eastern direction. But this one here is going to the west, uh, to the western direction, right? So all you need to note there is you have calculated already the change in momentum for ball A, and then you found that it was negative four point 
0.875, right? That means the change a uh, kg meters per second. That means the change in momentum for ball B is positive 4.875 kg meters per second. So note, the change in momentum, the magnitude equal, just that they have different directions. Now, that's why they're saying use the change in momentum of ball B to calculate the velocity of ball B after the collision. Now that we have already found uh, the change in momentum for ball B, we can now calculate the velocity. So change in momentum for ball B is equal to mass VF minus VI. Here we have 4.875 positive. And then the mass is 1.25. We do not have the final velocity. That's what we are looking for. But we do have the initial velocity. It's 3 meters per second to the western direction. So we need to indicate it as a negative as well because it's going to the west. So we have minus and then negative 3 here. And then close bracket. So we have 4.875 is equal to 1.25. Then this is VF plus 3. Now the quickest way to deal with this one, just divide both sides by 1.25. Now we will have 3.9 when we divide out there. And then this one will obviously divide out. So this is VF plus 3. And then the 3 will be transposed over to this side. So that's 3.9 minus 3. We are left with 0 0.9 meters per second. And since it's positive, that means it's going to the eastern direction. And it makes sense because uh, after ball B collides with ball A, it, call, A, it rebounds. So it will have to go back to the eastern direction. Right. So our final velocity is 0 0.9. So it makes sense uh, based on the question here because it's going to that direction, remember? So yeah. Then let's proceed to the next question. Um. Now, they say, what is the net change in momentum for the whole system, ball A and ball B? And then note that it's only one mark. So remember, we said the change in momentum for ball A is negative 4.875 kg meters per second. But then the change in momentum for ball B is positive 4.875 kg meters per second. If we had to look for the net change in momentum, then it is quite easy. We just say negative 4.875 plus 4.875. This will give us zero kg meters per second. Now uh, we have 3.4. It says calculate the magnitude of the average force that ball A and ball B exert on each other during collusion, if the two balls are in contact for 0 0.2 seconds. Now, with this one, remember I said that uh, you can use any of the two given objects. So you have ball A, you have ball B. You can use uh, any of these two objects to actually calculate uh, the average force. So remember, we have the formula F net. Delta T is equal to change in P from our impulse momentum theorem, which we can manipulate to form F net is equal to change in P over change in T. We are given that our change in T is 0 0.2 seconds. But then remember, if we are considering that we are using ball A, then our change in P was given as negative 4.875 and then over 0 0.2. Now punch that into your calculator. That's negative 4.875 over 0 0.2. That gives us a value of negative 24.375 newtons towards uh, ball A. Right. This is the force experienced by ball A due to ball B. Hence, it is negative, right? So remember, according to Newton's dead law, 
when ball A exerts a, 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 a force on ball B, ball B will have to exert the same magnitude of force but in the opposite direction, which is why if, and if we were to calculate this based on ball B, we would still find the same magnitude and then F net is equal to change in P over change in T. Remember, uh, this is positive 4.875 divided by 0 0.2. So this will give us 24.375 newtons. But this time it's 2 watts ball B. Right. So this one is negative because it is uh, being exerted in the western direction and this one is positive because it is being exerted in the eastern direction so that's what you need to note here so you'd find the same magnitude but then uh, the directions will not be the same so obviously with this one since it's negative you then need to conclude f net is therefore 24.375 newtons and then you'd say towards ball a right then uh, let's proceed. Three point five says: Is the collision elastic or inelastic? Explain the answer by means of a calculation or by means of calculations. Then uh, we know for that one in order to prove whether. Uh, this collision is elastic or inelastic. This is what we need to do. So we start by calculating the sum. Start by calculating the sum of kinetic energy initially for both these balls. So this is half mv squared for ball A plus half mv squared for ball B. Now, this is half our mass for ball A, 0 0.75. The initial velocity was 4 meters per second. And then here we have half 1.25. The initial velocity was 3 meters per second, but then remember it was going in the western direction. So I need to substitute as negative 3 and then square that. Now, all you need to do is punch all that in your calculator. So we have half 0 0.75, uh, 4 square plus half 1.25, and then negative 3 square. This will give us a value of 11.625 joules. So that's our sum of EK initially. Now let's calculate the sum of EK finally so again half mv squared of a plus half mv square of b so this is half 0 0.75 what was the final velocity for a uh, ball a it was given as negative 2.5 and then plus half the mass here it's 1.25 then we did calculate this one it gave us 0 0.9 and then square that. So, having to punch all this in a calculator, we have half 0 0.75 and then negative 2.5 square plus half 1.25 then 0 0.9 square then we get a value of 2.85 joules. Now, because we can see that uh, the sum of EK initially is not equal to the sum of EK finally, then we can conclude and say, therefore, the collusion is inelastic. Why the sum of EK initially is not equals to sum of ek finally or you can simply say the sum of ek initially is greater than 
the sum of ek finite to indicate that energy is lost kinetic energy is lost remember one property or for an elastic collusion is that kinetic energy will be lost so uh, that's what you are reasoning upon right so that's how you were supposed to tackle this question here if you have enjoyed the lesson you know what to do press the thumbs up button and then if you are watching the videos and you haven't subscribed yet please please press that subscribe button but most importantly share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance remember do not be selfish we are winning as a team Thank <laughs> you.